fellow rangers to track him in hopes that he would lead you back to his family's den. Um, you go to the den, kill the pups, and then set up an ambush and shoot and kill all the adults when they came back to tend to the pups. So eventually, they kill the last of the wolves as of 1926. And it's hard to imagine nowadays park rangers doing that. I think even a first grader would be able to express that if you're a park ranger, your number one job should be to protect the native animals in your park. So they were doing the exact opposite and really the worst thing they could have done. It, it was a terrible mistake. We eventually realized that and, and figured out a way to make up for it. So in January of 95, we brought in 14 wolves from Alberta as part of a reintroduction. <coughs> they were divided into three packs. And if we were at this exact spot on that day, January 12th of 95, there would have been a stock trailer um, coming in here, parking in this yard, and they would have unloaded three wolves. The, the original members of the Rose Creek pack. It was a mother wolf, number nine, her daughter, a pup, number seven, and the other wolves in her original family, including her mate, the alpha male, the father <coughs> of the pup, uh, very likely had recently been killed in Alberta by hunters or trappers. So there was very intensive wolf um, hunting and trapping up there. So to make it a functional pack, we had an extra big male, number eight, uh, number uh, ten, excuse me. So we put him with the, the two females in a wolf acclimation pen that's about a mile up the creek here. And the concept was, since wolves are homing animals, if you just catch them here, let them go here, they'll try to go home. But it was a true experiment in the sense that it had never been done before, and we didn't know for sure the results, but we hoped by having them in the acclimation pens, each pack in their own pen, for a couple of months, that would cause them to, to think of this as their new home, and it did work well. So when they were released, the um, daughter, who was just a touch under a year old at that point, number seven, she did something unusual. She left home. She really had never um, had much experience hunting or surviving. But she took off on her own, and she became a great hunter. She pretty much taught herself. She lived over in the Blacktail area between Tower Junction and Mammoth, and uh, was essentially establishing that as her territory as a lone wolf. Uh, the next winter, as the February mating season was coming, she was old enough to breed for the first time. And so she came back to this area one of the other families, the Crystal Creek pack that was brought down, they had four sons, four brothers who were her same age. They were all yearlings. So <coughs> she was a very eligible female. She had her own territory. So she had her pick of the litter, and she picked uh, male number two. Uh, Black Wolf, she was gray. She brought him back to that territory and that became the Leopold Pack, named after Aldo Leopold. Um, we wanted to honor him because he, as far as we know, was the first person to publicly suggest that wolves be brought back. 